Welcome to Revolutionary War Rarities, the podcast of the Sons of the American Revolution. Like and subscribe to us in your favorite podcast application or video application. For education resources, visit education.sar.org. Follow our podcast at fastfunhistory.com. Or to learn more about joining the Sons of the American Revolution, go to www.sar.org forward slash find dash your dash contact. And now, Revolutionary War Rarities. Scandals by Some Scoundrels, Season 2, Episode 7. Hi, everyone, and welcome to Season 2, Episode 7 of Revolutionary War Rarities. My name is Jim Griffith. And my name is Jim Maple. Jim, since the 1970s, it seems like any political scandal has gate at the end of it. This was a way of paying tribute, for lack, yeah. of, for lack of a better term, to the Watergate scandal. But political scandals, instability, and infighting is nothing new and certainly not limited to any single political party or individual. There are many examples of insurrections and scandals as far back as the founding of this country and even before that. So, the purpose of this episode is to familiarize everyone with some of those scandals and to help everyone understand just how precarious the founding of this country was. So, Jim Maples, why don't you go first? All right. Okay, here's one. How about the Conway Cabal? A cabal is simply a plot, in this case, a plot to remove George Washington from command and replace him with General Horatio Gates, sometimes also known as Granny Gates. The plot involves some very well-known names in American history, including Samuel Adams, Thomas Mifflin, Richard Henry Lee, Dr. Benjamin Rush, and of course, Thomas Conway. This was a rather lengthy and well-documented effort. You can reference thoughts of a free man written by numerous enemies in Congress of Washington. But ultimately, the plot fell apart, resulting in Thomas Mifflin's resignation from the Board of War, James Wilkinson's resignation from the Board of War, Horatio Gates returning to his troops and after being rebuked, and Thomas Conway suffering a near-death duel with General John Cadwalder, a big supporter of General Washington. Okay, here's another one. The Newburgh Conspiracy. This was a plan hatched just after the Revolutionary War to overthrow the Congress. The problem, as usual, was money. The current Articles of Confederation did not give Congress the authority to tax and therefore had little ability to raise money, to pay soldiers, or finance any aspect of the war. They were basically relying on the good graces of the states to send money as needed, which didn't happen very often. Therefore, the soldiers had, who had sacrificed so much to win the revolution had not been paid what was promised, and there wasn't any progress toward making that happen. In the end, once again, General George Washington was able to stop this uprising, which many sources again attributed to General Horatio Gates, or Granny Gates. Also, Jim, there was a plot to kill General George Washington very early in the American Revolution. And ultimately, one of his guards, Thomas Hickey, was hung as a result. Aaron Burr attempted to steal the territory of the Louisiana Purchase and start a country of his own. There were also numerous illicit affairs by Aaron Burr. How about the extortion of Alexander Hamilton after his affair with Marie Reynolds? He paid approximately $1,300 in hush money to Marie Reynolds and her husband. The impeachment of Supreme Court Justice Samuel Chase or the impeachment of Federal Judge John Pickering or the impeachment of William Blunt 
or Benedict Arnold's attempt to give away well, West Point. Yes, how about John Hancock's holding over 16,000 pounds of Harvard University's money? That was resolved, but was pushed as a scandal by John Hancock's political nemesis, John Bowden, and not fully resolved until after John Hancock's death. And then we have, of course, Silas Dean. This is another case of political of a political rival pushing a story about missing funds yeah. and ultimately destroying a life. So I guess we have to ask the question, have things changed in politics? Are they nastier today than they have ever been? Are things being done today that haven't been done in the past? Are people's political ambitions frequently ahead of what might be right for our country? Are people's contributions to the creation of our great nation sometimes erased due to the influence of their political nemesis? Are some people's contributions to the creation of our great nation sometimes enhanced due to their own influence? I think these are all great questions and sometimes these questions are difficult to answer. Is our nation and its founding principles in more trouble today than at any point in our history? As we near our 250th birthday, these are all reasonable questions to ask. And what I hope that we will all see is that the founding of a country is not easy. The running of a country is not easy. But what I also hope is that ultimately we can identify those great actions that were taken by many individuals so that we can learn from them. And I hope that we can identify those poor decisions that were made so that we can ultimately learn from them as well. And that we can enhance the interest in learning of history so that we can repeat those things that we should repeat and eliminate those things that should not be repeated. And that, my friends, is a Revolutionary War rarity. My name is Jim Griffith. And my name is Jim Maples. And we thank you for joining us today. And please be sure to join us for the next episode of Revolutionary War Rarities. This has been a production of the National Society, Sons of the American Revolution, www.sar.org.